Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give y'all honor and the glory and the praise, my Lord. Thank God for another day. This is another day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be I tried sad, sad, sad don't work out too good, so glad is better. The jaw of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So sometimes you just have to make your own jaw. Work it up. Amen. We work up sad. How come we can't work up glad? No, we can work it up. Change from sad to glad. We can do that. It's easy. I mean, you just got to work it. Uh, Y'all remember where we stopped at uh, Sunday? Second Se Corinthians. Second Corinthians. That's right, Brother brother John. Second Corinthians? 6, 14 through 18. 6, 14. That's where we're going to start at. Where we stopped at is where we're going to start at. Second Corinthians. Amen. Uh, that's page... Uh, yeah, that's page 1259. Amen. Page 12. Amen. 59. Good to see Sister Kim in the house. Amen. She's been working. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. For the well family. Thank God for them. Amen. Bless God. Y'all are moving to y'all house? Huh? How y'all like y'all move? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? I, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they, they're moving that in the, in the uh, house that they uh, okay. written in. Okay. Yeah, okay. They were at the hotel until right. they, they can find a house. So the Lord bless them. Get them a house. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get them all the hand clap. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Brother. Amen. I thank God. Amen. What he's doing in their life. I'm excited. I said, I'm excited for them. Lord, have mercy, God. Amen. Always remember, yours coming too. Yours coming is on the way. When you get happy for somebody else, amen. Bless God. God, yes. uh, uh, bless you for being happy for somebody else. Amen. You don't want to be sad for them now. Yes. You don't cut your blessings off. So we're going to look at 12 and 9, and we, we're dealing with, I done changed this, I done changed this subject. This is the third time. First time I, I had the subject, you can get you can't get me to sin against God. All right? And I said, well, Lord, I don't, I don't want to be selfish with death. So then I put, you can't get us to sin against God. Then I find out how them sinning said, Lord, the devil is a subject to us in your name. I said, well, I don't want to use us, Lord. I don't want to use us. So now I done changed it. This is the third time. Amen. I changed it. I changed it to you can't get... Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Word of God to sin against God. Y'all <laughs> can't tell me. Y'all can't tell me. Amen. So if you in him, you can't what? Sin. You can't sin. The Lord, have mercy. Who's going to get the glory? God. Hey, we ain't going to get none of it. Amen. All of them going to go back to God because it's God that helped us not to sin. His Word is the one that helped us not to sin. sin. Lord, bless God. Holy Ghost, help us not to. Oh, so all the glory goes back to. Because he's not going to share the glory with another. There ain't no flesh, no glory in his presence. So all of it going to go back to God. I said, Lord, you know, that's awesome. I had to change that three times. And I finally, I believe I got it right this time. I ain't got to change it no more. Because it's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Word of God, and Jesus. Amen. Bless God. So if you in them, amen, you in them, amen, you ain't going to sin because they can't sin. Is that good news? Oh, that's good news. Amen. So we got to follow the instruction. Let's look at 6 and 14. Be not unequal yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? Amen. There's no way, amen, that uh, you can fellowship. How can two walk together except they agree? So if I'm, if I'm walking with somebody that's an unbeliever, and, 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 and I'm a believer, there's no way that we're going to have fellowship together. It, it just ain't going to happen. If you, you ever seen a, a farmer and, 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 a, and a mechanic on the same page? Why not? One talking about the crop, the other talking about the engine or transmission, a flywheel or something. You see, because they got, they, they're, on the, they're not on the same page because they're in different Lovers, yeah, they're, they're in different, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, 
trade. And they're not in the same trade. So if I'm in the same thing with God and I'm walking with a believer, guess what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about God. Because that's what a believer does. He talks about the Lord. And he talked about himself, or he was getting right with God. I mean, you know, so a believer, amen, he, they, you can hold a conversation with another believer, but it's going to be hard to hold a conversation with an unbeliever because you ain't going to have the same conversation. They ain't going to have it. So you ain't got no fellowship there. So that's why he tells us, amen, don't be on an easy joke together, amen, with an unbeliever. Uh, and what fellowship had righteous with unrighteous? So if you're doing right, somebody else doing wrong, what kind of fellowship you got? Yeah. So you have to have two people to do wrong to have a fellowship. See, when I was out in the world, amen, the world loved me. Oh, yeah, we had a good time out there. Now, when I came out of the world, the world didn't like me no more. I wonder why. But now I still got to love them even though they don't love me because I'm under commandment. I have been commanded to love. So now I have to love regardless. Don't make no difference whether you're saved or unsaved. Love still is a commandment. So, and what communion had light with darkness? Now, you know light and darkness can't fellowship together. Uh, what would happen if you go in, the, in your room and you turn on that light? I would not come and take off like that. Because he can't stand alive. So if you if we're walking in Jesus, amen, we, we, we're the light. Can, can darkness hang with us? Yes, darkness can't hang with you when you're walking with Jesus. That's why folks look at you and they say, well, they're they strange. See, they're different. Give a lot of hands up. Give a lot of hands up for our brother coming in. Hey, brother Herbert. Brother Herbert's been in the third. Hey man, bless God. I said, Brother Herbert been in the third. He just walked in. Y'all need to give him a hand clap, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> my God, I just said something that time. So, my God. So, light and darkness, they man came from the ship together. So, I don't find out it don't work like that. So, if I'm going to be the light, hey amen, if I'm going to be the light of this world, I have to walk with Jesus. If I'm going to be the darkness as well, I'm going to walk with the devil. It ain't no, this thing ain't hard, yeah. You're going to walk with somebody. Yeah, it's going to be somebody you're going to walk with. Amen. So I decide, amen, to stand in light. That's my decision. Amen. Look at that 15 verse. And when God had Christ with Bidiam, of what part he that believeth with an infidel. Now, the infidel is an, un, it is an unbeliever. So you, it, it, there is no concord, there is no agreement there with Christ and Bidiam. And when you study Bidiam in the Old Testament, you find that was out of God that they were worshiping. And they want Bidiam to be with Christ. Or they want Bidiam, and they try to put Bidiam with God. It didn't work. It didn't work. Because God is a jealous God. He said, don't put any other gods before me. So they were trying to put Bidiam, their God, that they were fooling with, with God. It, it, it ain't going to work together. Hey, man, look at that 16 verse. And what agreement had the temple of God with ours? So they were serving ours when they were serving uh, Be uh, Bidiam. So they were serving ours. There's no way that the temple of God going to have ours in it. So, Lord, have mercy, God. I said, okay, then, Lord. I, I, I see how you want me to separate myself from that. So that way you can be my God. So if I separate myself from that, then I know God is my God because I'm not dealing with that no more. I used to. I used to talk to Mary and Joseph. Didn't know no better. It told me it was all right. I don't do that no more. I quit. Who gets the glory? God. How much of it? God. I give it all to him. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be that God, and they shall be my people. So what God's world up? Inside of you. Somebody going to be in there. Either light going to be in there or darkness. Somebody going to be in your house. You need to check your house out. See who in there. The preacher, I'm going to know. Oh, you got to line up with the word. I said, that's the line of the word. That way you know whether you're in light or darkness. You got the word to tell you the truth. You got the word to tell you what's sin and what's right, what's wrong. Amen. So when you know what the word said, you can know whether you're in light or darkness. Now, if the word tell me to love and I hate you, what I'm walking in? Darkness. I'm walking in darkness. How, how, 
So look at 17 verse. Wherefore come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I receive you. So now he given me, now he, that's a condition now. I got to meet this condition if I want God in my life. I think that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I think that's fair. Now, you think somebody's going to pay you if they hire you and then you stay at home the whole year? Ah, then you agreed to work for them. <laughs> so, so if you're going to take off that long, uh, they're going to find a way to get rid of you because that wasn't in the contract. Hey, Amen. Kill it on another hand clap for years. God is somebody. I said, God is somebody. Thank God for the word. So he, tell, he told me, come out and separate myself. Now, look at that 18 verse. And, and we'll be a father. Now, this is the condition. Once I do what he tell me to do, if I be obedient to his word, this is the condition of the 18 verse. And he will be a, and, 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 and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Said who? That's God talking. That's the Lord Almighty. Now, he just got to telling me that if I want to walk in the light, I got to meet the conditions, amen, that he set forth for me to walk in. So I don't go back to the streets that I used to go back to and party and drink and cut up and act crazy no more. I'm separated from that. I said that the Lord did it. The Lord did it. I used to be an alcoholic. Been 40, gone on 41 years. I ain't touched that slop because, because Jesus. I took one step. You know, I got a 12-step program. I took one step, and his name is Jesus. And I, ain't, I don't need the stuff. I, I'm getting a little high in mind. And I ain't had nothing to drink. God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost wine. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap. I said, give the Lord another hand clap for his God or somebody. Amen. Come with me now, amen, to uh, page 1247. Now, page 1247 is going to tell me how to fall. And then we're going to show you how not to fall. So now the word is giving me how to fall. So guess what? I don't want to fall now. So because the word is telling me how I can fall, then I got another, I got some other scriptures to teach me how not to fall. So I want to learn both sides of this, see. I learn both sides. That's why I learned good and evil. The reason I learned good and evil from the word, the word teaches me that. Amen. The reason I learned good and evil from the word, I learned good so I know how to do it. I learned evil so I won't do it. This ain't hard, y'all. I learned the evil so I won't do it. I learned the good to do it. So I got knowledge of both, good and evil. From the word now, not, not what man say is good and evil. I, I got to go to the word because man be saying some stuff that we don't be good. The Bible said it be gonna call good and evil, and evil good. Are they doing that now? We're in that we're in that time now. We're in that time when man is calling good evil, and he calling evil good. We're in that time. Let's get back over here. Amen. Bless God. Good the Lord. I say, good the Lord. Another hand clap for his God is somebody. Amen. Thank God for the word. Amen. Look at that 12 word. Amen. 10 and 12. Wherefore, well, let him that think that he standeth take heed lest he what? Now, why he going to fall? Because he what? He think he can do it. We can't do it, y'all. I'm glad to know that now. Herman Andrew Young, that's me, he cannot do it of himself. He going to need a power greater than himself. Because there's a power that's greater than me. But when I get the power greater than me, then I got a power greater than one that thinks he's greater than God. <coughs> he thinks he's greater than God. God and threw him out. I didn't throw him out of heaven. He found out he ain't great. He ain't as great as he thought he was. So now I, I find out how I can fall. Hey Amen. I can fall if I think I can do it. But now, if I think I can't do it and I need the Lord to help me, then I got the power. See, I got the power that comes from God. Amen. That stop me from sinning. Let's look at another one. Let's look at, uh, this is going to be 2 Peter, page 1325. This is going to teach you how not to fall. 
So you want to find scriptures in the Word of God how to teach you how you're going to sin and how you're going to stop sinning. How many people go to learn how to stop sinning? You ever Sister Kim said? Sister Kim said, Sister Kim said, ain't too many of them want to know how to stop sinning. But it's in the Word. If you turn that TV on, spend some time in the Word, guess what? You end up learning more. Why? Because they ain't giving everything to you on the TV. I talk with the brother, brother say he turned that TV off and he started reading the Word more. I said, what's going to happen, brother? You're going to get more Word. See, the Word going to give you more Word where man ain't going to give it to you on the TV because he want it smooth. Amen. Second Peter. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 4. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 4. Wherefore, uh, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So how are you going to get a present promise? It's from the divine nature. It has to come from God. It has to come from God. It, it can't come from a man. You see, it has to be God in that man. Or the God in that woman. And, and, and you don't know who's in that. You be around him a while. You find out who in that. Amen. Bless God. Uh, so uh, uh, that you be uh, that by these you might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. So the divine nature, which is God, that divine nature in us, Amen, going to help us stop sinning. Because God can't sin. <laughs> well, I tell you this off the chain. We got, we got some groceries here today. So a man tells you you're going to keep sinning, run. Run from him as quick as you can. He don't, he, he, don't, he don't know how to stop sinning. He thinks he can do it. He can't do it. That's why he's still sinning. He needed a divine nature to come in there and help him. Then that's fair for and besides this, amen, giving all diligence to add to your faith, virtue, and the virtue now. Now, it's a growth. This is a growth. That's why we got on the sign. Come grow with us. This is a growth. Now, notice how the growth starts. That divine nature, amen, it starts with something. So you have to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere in this now. You don't get it overnight. I'm still learning. I've been in there 41 years, and I'm still learning the word. Uh, what did I tell you? There ain't no end to this. You just get better at it. You don't get worse. It gets better when you walk with the Lord. Amen. So we see that uh, in all diligence add to your faith. So we got faith working for how faith come? By hearing, By hearing what? The word of God. So the more you hear the word of God, the more your faith gonna rise. The more your faith is built up. Now who don't want to hear the word? Yes. Who? Yes. That flesh and who else? Yes. And that devil. Yes, the kid, no, you went right to that. Right to the sword. That old flesh don't want to hear, don't want to hear the word. That flesh want to hear, let's go fishing, let's go hunting, let's go drinking, let's go party. I'm talking about the flesh now. Uh, let, let's go to the boat. Let's go eat. Let's go eat. Let's go to Golden Corral. Eat all we can eat. Let me get back over here. You ain't gonna hear the flesh say, let's go read the word and eat all we can eat. From the word, so you have to have knowledge to do that. Because your flesh ain't going to, your stomach will ever tell you to read the word. You ever What's your stomach will tell you? It's time to go eat. And it gets a growling. You have some ever growl when you ain't giving no food? It gets a growling and cutting up in that. So they're trying to tell you, you ain't fed them. So your stomach ain't going to never tell you to go eat the word. Ain't that something? So I got I to have some knowledge of this thing, amen, of what's going on here. So then I, I add to my faith, virtue, uh, virtue, knowledge. What is virtue? Power. Power. Do the most. You know, Jesus Christ said he felt the virtue come out, amen, when that woman touched him. Amen. Bless God. That woman said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be all right. Oh, that lady had some faith. And now and she touched the hem of his garment because she was too, she was too weak. She lost all her blood and spent all her money, so she was weak. And so all she can do is go to the crowd on her knees to touch the hem of his garment. He'd say, who touched me? The Bible says he felt the virtue come out. 
That power, dynamos, come out of them. Lord, have mercy of God. She said, Lord, I said, and the disciples said, all them folks around you, Lord, surely somebody touch you. Yeah, a lot of folks around Jesus, but how many believe that Jesus can do something for them? So when you come to Victor Jesus Bible study, don't just come, amen, come looking for something that God's going to do something for you. Have some faith that God is going to touch you in the service. My God. You ain't going to leave out here the same way you came in. You're going to leave out here differently. Because you got faith that God's going to do something. So that woman had some faith that Jesus was going to do something. And she said, Lord, I touch you. He said, Thy faith have made thee whole. Your faith can touch Jesus. I don't care where you at. My God. Give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. For your God is somebody. Amen. Bless God. So that, that do the most power come out. Amen. Bless God. Uh, and, and, and to virtue knowledge. So once I got that do the most power, I'm adding knowledge to my do the most power so I know how to use the power and how to keep the power. See, you can lose the power. If you don't believe it, I, I know what I'm talking about. Ask Samson. Did Samson lose his power? What happened to him? He gave in. He told that woman his secret uh, with, all, with his own lust for self. He wasn't full of lust. He wasn't total, total. And then she said, the uh, Philistine's on you. Well, the first time, he shook himself and whipped him Philistine. And then uh, the second time, he told another lie. And then uh, he didn't tell the truth. He told another lie. And she said, if it back to me, she would have, he would say, wait a minute, this woman trying to kill me. And then the third time, he finally told his secret. She said, you, you, you don't love me. Because if you had loved me, you'd let me kill you. <laughs> in, in other words. Uh, in other words. In other yeah, words. I hope y'all got that one. I hope y'all caught that one. In, in other words, she, she, she didn't quite tell him that. Uh, but that's what she should have told him. Because that's what she did. Let me get back over here. Lord, how much is God? That was the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. For his God. I say God is somebody. Amen. Thank you, God, for the word. Amen. Bless God. So I got to keep adding to my life. Amen. Bless God as I walk with God. So I got knowledge to know, amen, what's going on in my life. Amen. That I, if I'm going to live, amen, holy, I got to have God. I got to have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I got to have the word of God abiding in me if I'm going to live holy. Because they can't sin. Lord, I'm asking. So I don't escape, amen, uh, in the world that's coming. So I got virtue, then I got knowledge, because uh, my people pass for what? So if you lack knowledge, you're going to perish. But if you're full of knowledge of God, we ain't talking about knowledge of this world now. We're talking about knowledge of God. There's a difference. Amen. That's a difference in that because the man quoted the scripture out of the Old Testament about uh, knowledge can get you in trouble. I said, that's, that's natural, brother. That's natural. Because if you got a lot, no, a lot of knowledge how to, how to be an electrician, a plumber, uh, you know, you got knowledge how to take an engine to loose and put it back together. You got knowledge, amen, uh, enough how to build a house. Don't you know, folks, the way you are? Why? You got too much knowledge. You got too much knowledge. They're going to be calling your phone and that phone going to be ringing off the hook. But how many people call you when you're full of knowledge of God? You ain't gonna get that many calls. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why you don't get that many calls when you're full of the knowledge of God. Because they know they're gonna, they gonna tell you the truth. So they call you, they'll call somebody else. <laughs> Unless they're looking for the truth. You heard it, you heard it, brother, brother? Unless they what? Looking for the truth. And how many are going to be looking for the truth? Not many. It ain't going to be many. Because the Bible says, why the road of destruction and what? Many go that way. Straight and narrow is the way and bear what? Few. So you ain't going to have but a few that are going to be looking for that. Oh, I'm up on this thing now. I said, ain't going to be but a few. That's what the word says. So I believe the word. There ain't going to be but a few. How many did Jesus Christ had when he went to the cross? Huh? He had none. Oh, none. Yeah, yeah. What happened to them? They scattered. They took all. They sold them up. Okay. So, so, so when you're going through trouble, don't look for everybody to be with you. <laughs> but Jesus. But Jesus. <laughs> but the Father. The Holy Ghost. And the Word of God. You've got the best with you. Yeah. I say you got the best with you.
with you now. If they didn't scatter, you got the best. Stay with them. Don't, don't, don't go from him now. Don't leave from him. Because uh, he can keep you. He's a what? He's a keeper now. If you want to be kept. Amen. Because he can't sin. Amen. So uh, we look at, uh, we have to add, amen, to knowledge and then to temperance. You know what temperance is? Temperance is self-control. If you see it here on this board here, you see, you see it, uh, a self-restraint of any kind. The practice of every, uh, uh, of never drinking alcohol beverage. Never what? Well, you, you got control of yourself. You have self-control. Self-control, that, that, that's spiritual now. This is not natural we're talking about here. That's this self-control coming from the spirit. It coming from the divine nature of God. So when you got self-control in your life, you know that's God in you. Amen. Helping you to control yourself. My God. Who going to get the glory? God. God going to get it all because he's the one that happened. Amen. So we're adding. We're adding divine nature. If you start at fourth verse, you see that it comes from the divine nature of God. That comes from God. That don't come from a natural human being. Amen. You can't control yourself without God. Yourself lose control. So that's why you have to go back and say, Lord, you got to help me. If you don't help me, I ain't going to make it. Hey, you're just being honest with it. Hey, man, he know that. But it's good to talk to him like that. Because I talk to him like that all the time. You got to help her, my Lord. You're about to lose it. And then all of a sudden, I give you some divine help. Some divine help. Lord, have mercy, God. Get the Lord. I say, get the Lord another hand clap for his God. I say, God is somebody. Thank God for the word. So I'm adding here. Amen. I'm adding to my life. And now, now I got temperance. And then I got patience. Y'all know what patience is? <laughs> patience. The Bible says patience will uh, 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 help, you, help you with your soul. Amen. Bless God. Patience is when things ain't showed up yet. And you're in a bind. And now it looks like uh, the light getting ready to get cut off or the water and everything getting cut off. So you have to have patience that God going to help you with this thing that he's going to see you come through this time. And now you got to stay with him now and uh, always pay your tithes. Don't steal from him because then you want God to help you. You're going to take, you going to bite off the hand of the one that's feeding you. Don't put yourself before God. Put God before you. And then watch him do it. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. I done done it. I done done many years like that. And he take me, he, he ain't stopped taking care of me yet. My God. Get a lot of another hand clap for you. I said, I know what I'm talking about. Hey man, God bless this, bless this building to be paid off in four years. We had a 15-year note on this house. You ain't got a lot of folks in here. God bless to pay that van off. Five years and two years. We ain't got a lot of folks in here. I'm talking about who get the glory? Who well, ain't taking nothing over here? God get it all. Amen. Bless God. Get the Lord another hand clap for you. God is somebody. I say God is somebody. Amen. Bless God. And, and to God is brother kindness. So now, I, 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 patient, as I, as I had my patient, I have to add godliness. What is godliness? Being like God. That's godliness. Being just like him. Is he sinning? No. How come he don't sin? Can't sin. He can't sin because he's holy. He ain't changing his nature for nobody. Y'all gonna find y'all gonna get some out of this lesson. I say he ain't changing his nature for nobody. We got some scriptures back as up. Lord have mercy. Amen. And to God and brotherly kindness. Amen. So I leave from God and being like God. Amen. That's that's my desire. To stop sinning. Amen. Uh, brotherly kindness. So if I have brotherly kindness, what is brotherly kindness? That, that's love. That's being kind. Regardless of whether you feel like doing it or not. I don't care what folks do to you. And God, God don't hold me accountable what I do to you. Amen. Now, he's going to hold the other person accountable. It's how I react toward you after you react toward me. I can't act like you. Because if I act like you, then we'd be in both. In the, the blind lead the blind. They both going to fall in love. Bitch, we both gone down. But now, if I'm wise enough, amen, to be, have some brotherly kindness in me, and, I, and, and sometimes people squeeze all the brotherly kindness out of you, so where are you going to get some at? You got to go back to God. 
Yeah, go back to God and get it. Divine nature. You got to have the divine nature operating in you. Because folks will squeeze stuff out of you. How I know about that? Uh, I know what I'm talking about. Y'all know too. Amen. Ain't nobody exempt from this now. Amen. So we have brother kind and then we have love. Charity. So love, love is a perfection. Amen. Love, love is a, you see in the word that love is perfection. Amen. So we got to have the love. What love are we talking about? God be loved. God be loved. <laughs> he, he ain't talking about no. See, uh, it's, oh my God. Iraka shama. Rika karma roshe. We ain't talking about here is love and, and Phineas love and, and Stor is love. We talk about God kind of love. That God kind of love has no conditions. Ain't what you did to me or what I did to you. I love, love regardless. Still love. God, the Bible said, well, we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. That's love. To send his son to die for me while I'm still sinning. That got to be some love. To give of his own son that he had no sin for me, that had all of your sin. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap. I said, give the Lord another hand clap for you. God is somebody. I ain't going nowhere. Amen. Bless God. So then, now, for the, if these things be in you and abound, uh, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that give me a knowledge of Christ. That's the way Christ is. That's his divine nature. So if I study the divine nature of Jesus Christ and let his divine nature walk through me, in me, out of me, bless God, then I know when I'm under a trial, I still can love you. When I'm under a trial, I can forgive you. That come from God. Come from no human being. That's what Brother, Brother Herb said. That's that agape love. Amen. A God kind of love. So you got that kind of love flowing through you. Amen. You ain't going to let nothing hinder you. I say nothing. Nothing can hinder you. Because you're free. That's powerful when it comes from God. We get night for Give the Lord another hand clap. I said, give the Lord another hand clap for his God or somebody. Night for it. But he that lacking these things is blind. He cannot see a fall. He had forgotten that he was purged from what? His sin. From his own sin. So, it, Lord have mercy. So, if, them, if those things in me, my old sins had been purged. But I got to keep those flowing through me so my old sins can't come, come by. See, your sins will come back to you. Then knock on your door. Don't answer that door. Let Jesus answer. Say, Lord Jesus, you answer that for me because the devil tried to get me to go down there and see about this woman. I don't want to go, Lord. Oh, look, Lord, uh, the devil knocking on my door, woman, go see about this man. I'm talking about the woman now. And I want one woman to go see about this man. Lord, you answer the door. And when Jesus answered the door for you, and the devil see who comes to the door, <coughs> guess what? He gone. He can't handle Jesus. Can't handle the word. You can't have it, God. Lord, have mercy of God. You've got the folk running with you. You make fire. Give the Lord another hand clap for you. Thank God for the word. Then pray. Well, for all the red and brown, give dinner to make you a call in the election show. But if you do these things, you should never what? Fall. You'll never fall. How would y'all like to never fall? <laughs> you got to have them things working in you. They got to be flowing through you. That way you'll never fall. Now, he told me how I can fall if I think I can do it. Some people make you believe you can do that. Don't listen to them, folks. I'll be listening, I'll be listening to some, some of the brothers on TV make, having, the, having the people think they can do it. You cannot do this because the scripture already said without me, you can't do nothing. You know what nothing is? Nothing. Uh, your brother John broke that word down. Nothing. So I ain't trying this without him. I ain't trying it without the divine nature. Amen. Because I'm finding out Herman can't do it. It takes the divine nature of God flowing through me. And I'm adding these things in my life daily. Amen. As I walk with God, talk with him, amen, and live for him, that I got to add this daily. Now, you're going to have spiritual warfare. And I'm almost going to take you out of here. That's why you're going to need this flowing in your life to destroy it before it destroys you. 
Give the Lord another hand clap for his God. I said, God is somebody. Thank God for the word. Amen. Come with me now to page 12. Amen. Uh, what I put here? Unless he is wise, you see, a person is not, not a match for Satan unless he is wise. And nobody here match for Satan unless you're wise. You got to have the wisdom of God. So if you got the wisdom of God flowing through you, then you're wise enough to know how your enemy is trying to do, how you're trying to trick you. He ain't gonna give you nothing you don't like. He's gonna give you what your flesh like. Come out of your mind. Not with your soul. Your soul is gonna suffer by uh, yielding to the flesh. But if you yield to the spirit of God, not giving you into your feelings and emotions, because the devil plays with that. He plays with our feelings and emotion, amen, because he knows we're going through something. And he'll play that little DVD over and over in your ear. That's why you need to break it every time he play it. Amen. Break it. Jesus, man. Put some Jesus on that DVD. Amen. Put some blood on it. And then he's going to try to play again. Hit it again. And how you know when you got it? It ain't bothering you no know, more. You don't hear it no more. So it's a battle. If you want to be free, uh, 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 you sometimes you got to fight for this night. Amen. Sometimes it's a fight and sometimes it's a rest. God, I don't have you fighting all the time. Sometimes he'll give you a rest from all that. Give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Feel God. I say God is somebody. Thank God for the word. Amen. Come with me now. Amen. Uh, so if, if, if I'm going to do this, i got to go to page 1023. Page 1023. Page 1023. That's going to be Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah 4 and 6. So then I got to give you some knowledge, amen, from the word of God. Now, I'm getting this from God's word. Now, it feeds me knowledge to know that I can't do this myself, but this is how I can do it. Amen. Look at that sixth verse. Uh, that he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Ze uh, Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might. Not by who? By what? Who might are you talking about? Your might. might. It's not by our might. We can't do that, y'all. Not by your might now. Not by who power? It's not by your power. But by what? Say who? Say the Lord of hosts. He said, if you're going to do this here, amen, if you're going to do this thing, it's not by your might. It's not by your power. Tell me, you're going to pull up your boot shrine. We're going to pull it up. They're going to get loose again. You're going to trip over that boot shrine. So you might as well go get you some Holy Ghost. Go get you some do the most power. Power to help you with this thing now. Amen. Bless God. So the Lord and told me it ain't by my might. It's not by my power, but by his spirit. That's the only way I can accomplish this thing. That's the only way I can defeat it. I can't defeat it myself. I done tried it, no work. Amen. So the way I find out to defeat it is that I have to be by the Spirit of God. So God is a what? He's a spirit. And know that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't see him. Do you see the wind? Can you take the wind and put it in your purse? The Lord, I mean, can you take it and put the wind in your pocket? <coughs> so we're dealing with men and women in here. No, you can't do that. But you see the wind, effects of it. You feel it. You can't see the spirit, but you ought to see the effects of the spirit, and you ought to feel the Holy Ghost sometimes. Lord, that must be God. I think you ought to feel his presence. Well, you can't see the devil, but you ought to be able to feel when he's there. You don't feel comfortable either. He'd be dealing with your flesh, calling your mind and your emotions. And you know he, that's why you know he's dealing with you. Uh, yeah, you can know the difference. So it's not by my might, amen, not by my power. He said, but by my spirit, amen, said the Lord of hosts. So uh, that, that's the only way, amen, bless God, uh, that I'm going to have to be wise in this thing, amen, to defeat this enemy, amen, that's bothering me like that. Come with the page uh, 1048, amen, page 10, amen, 48. Uh, page 1048 as, as Matthews uh, 10 and 16. Amen. Is that what I had to go, Lord? Page 1048. Yeah. That's what I got down there. Let's see what we got in there. Amen. Sometimes I got, I'm kind of curious myself when I wrote down here. What I got in, the, what I got in this groceries here. Amen. 1048. Lord, how about you say, write the vision down and make it what? Make it plain. So we, we're going we're gonna to make it plain. Amen. Look at that 10. Amen. Uh, 10 and 16. 
Amen. 10 and 16. Behold, I, I, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wood. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and what? Harmless as a dove. Now, a serpent is wise. You're going to see there's two kinds of serpent. You'll find out Satan, amen, he's called a serpent, and you'll find out the snake is a serpent. Now, we're going to deal with the snake because he's a serpent. He's wise. He's supposed to be wise. Now, that's what the Bible says he is. The Bible says that a serpent is wise. So he tells us to be like that. Not to be like the snake. Just be wise like him. Amen. Just, don't, don't be like the snake. No. Go advice about it. Amen. So let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. All oh, this is all. This is good stuff here. Amen. Let's go to Genesis. Amen. And we're going to see, amen, that, that the serpent uh, is talking about the snake here now. Not, not talking about Satan. Amen. So let's look at three and one. Now the serpent was more subtle. You know what subtle means? Cunning. If you look at that T, you'll see that it means cunning. He was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So he was more cunning than any beast of God that God created in the garden. He was more subtle. The snake was. So that's why the Lord said be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Now, a dove, can a dove hurt you? <laughs> a dove can hurt you. <laughs> but a snake, he'll bite you. But he wants you to just have to, to, to be wise like that. So, amen. Uh, he wants you to be wise. Amen. Bless God. Now the serpent was more subtle in the, in the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden. Now who's talking through the serpent? The devil. The devil. So you'll find out the devil end up using the serpent. Now the serpent could have could have rejected. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that now. You, you find out why you think God put a curse on him? Because he had an opportunity to reject Satan. Why did God put a curse on man and woman? Because they, had they had an opportunity to say no. So we want to get, what we want to get out of this lesson is obedience. Now what we want to get is obedience to the word. Now so if I obey the word of God, then I don't have to suffer the consequences. Because there's going to be some consequences that are going to come my way if I disobey his word. If anybody you know uh, overthrow God, ever, anybody y'all know? Anybody y'all know, amen, in this earth was strong enough to fight against God? Uh, anybody y'all know that was strong enough in heaven to fight against God? The old shoes, I mean, the devil thought he was strong enough to fight against God. He was deceived all himself. Now, come on, y'all, walk with me a little bit on this. If you was a creator, we're just going to put you in that place. If you was a creator... Would you create something greater than yourself? No. It ain't no way that I would take something and make it where I can't control it. Look like the devil would have said, wait a minute, God brought me here. Hey, he should have came to the cell. He should have thought about that line. So wait a minute, God created me, and I'm trying to overthrow him. God, have mercy, God. And he's still thinking he can overthrow God. Now that's deception. He ain't deceiving me. Oh, he make me go against God. I say, he make me go against God. That's why I need some power. I need some dunamos. I need some Holy Ghost. I need some word. I need some Jesus. I need the, I need the cross. I need the blood. Lord, how much God? I need the anointing, yoke the straw, the burnt remover. Lord, I need it all. Lord, give it to me all, Lord. I need it all. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap. Thank God for the word. Now, I'm going to show you the deception here. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said. Who said it? God said that. A lot of people don't read the word of God to the place where they understand what God is saying. So what they do, they think God will compromise his word, and they'll go along with what somebody else is saying. God have mercy. I did that today. Now, I really experienced that a half of an apple was going to shoot the blood sugar up in this person, and I tried it again with a green one. I found out the green is just like the red apple. They shot the sugar up. But the person told me that the green was better than the red. They both got sugar. I said, Lord, I ain't trying that no more. I ain't going to do it. 
I got me some knowledge now, so you ain't gonna try to give me the green better than the red. It's going to, it's same effects, because they both got sugar. They might have a little difference in something else that they have in there, uh, health-wise, but the sugar's there, and that's what we're dealing with. So you gotta know what you're dealing with. So here, they, here, here they, they had the word. They had the word of God, but they let a, they let a, a, a devil speak to a snake, Lord, how much it, and then deceive them. Now, if you know what the situation, don't let nobody come and tell you that ain't what it said, this is what it means. It done changed it right now. Yeah, God know what he said. You let the word interpret the word. Don't let nobody interpret the word for you. Let God's word interpret the word for you. You got to study now. And study yourself, uh, approve of the God, a worker need not be ashamed. Rightly, divide the word of truth. So you got to write and divide there. Now the devil ain't gonna write and divide it now. He gonna twist the word. Watch what he do with the, Watch what he do with the Adam and Eve. So he can steal from him. He took the garden from him. Amen. Look at, and, and and the serpent said unto the woman, "You should not surely die." What did God say? You will surely die. What did the devil say? You ain't gonna die. You know, folks will tell you today. You are in the grace. You can go in on to the boat. You're on the grace. You go to that woman's house and shack up. I had a brother Wednesday tell me, he said, now, I can't, I, he said, I can't, he said, I'm one of them guys, I can't buy no paper, amen, for my, for my wife because I ain't got enough money to get married. I said, well, you need to get out of it then. You ain't got enough money. I said, ain't no excuse to sin against God. Fortification still sinning. You ain't got no money. Get out of it until you get some money. Go get your job somewhere. Now you're going to take care of her and you want to shack up with her. Let me get back over here. That wasn't in the notes. And the serpent, amen, said to the woman, you should not surely die. So he didn't lie to her. And God told her she was. Amen. And for God know that in the day that you eat thereof, that then your eyes should be open and you should be as God knowing good and evil. So now he offered them something. He offered, what are you doing? What? So Satan's going to offer you something. So he can lure you in. So if you lust and you and you ain't got nothing but lust for women, guess what he going to do? He going to put enough of them around you. Uh-oh. If you got a lust for gambling, guess what he going to do? He going to make sure that you have your friend, your buddy come by and see about you. Uh, he going to put some folks around you to lure you in. Now, if you full of Jesus, you full of the word, how long you think they're going to hang with you? I wonder why. Because light and daughter can't what? They can't fellowship together. Ain't no way. Amen. I, I done told y'all before. Amen. When I got saved, my brothers came to see about me. They heard about what happened to me. They heard that I got saved. So they had to come and see about me. And when I told them about Jesus, they said, well... I'll tell you what, I'll talk to you later. They thought lady was going to change. Oh, lady, lady, I got more word now. Yeah. I said, lady put me with more words, so I talked to them more about the word. And, and my brothers cut me loose. Uh, I didn't have to cut them loose. Give the Lord another hand clap for me. God is somebody. I said, God is somebody. Light and darkness can't fellowship together. Amen. There ain't no way it's going to happen. Amen. So God knows that you, so he offered them something. Now, what they need knowledge of evil for? They had no knowledge. Oh, what knowledge they had of? Good. That's all. They didn't even know they were naked. Now, that, you know, we know when you get naked. Don't we know? Well, we know. You know when you get naked. Because you got knowledge of what? Good and evil. You got knowledge of both now. They ain't had knowledge of evil. They didn't even know they was naked until they sinned. That's why we, we, that's why we got a rouse. We got to whip sin before sin whip us because we got knowledge of both of them. And when the woman saw that a, a tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took it took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her and he did eat. What, what was the husband at? Right there. Somebody said the husband wasn't there. The word say he was there. Guess what I'm going with? 
I'm going with the word. Now, look back to me. Adam should have took charge right then. Uh, he was supposed to take charge of the house. Now, look back to me. He should have took charge of the house. So, wait a minute here. God said we're going to die. Uh, uh, Eve, honey, sweetie. I mean, he could have called all kind of a good name. Uh, anyhow, amen. But he should have stopped that. I don't know what kind of fool he was now. Uh, so far, he says the alpha. I don't know what the alpha is. So he should have said, no, honey. Get that out your hand. Guess what? If he had took the role as a husband, they both would have been in the garden today. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Give the Lord another hand clap for who he is. God is somebody. Amen. So let's look at it. Let's look at another. So I got to be wise of that. I got to be wise of the place. But if Satan offer me something, I know what the word says. So he can't deceive me and make me think it's all right to do that because the word says wrong. So I need to have enough knowledge of the word to resist evil and do good. As we get resisted. Let's go to page 13, 18. Page 13, 18. Lord, have mercy, God. What I got here? Oh, yeah, let, let's go over here first. Amen. Let's go over here. Oh, that's a lot of groceries, Lord. Let, let me go deal with this near. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let's go to uh, 1318. I got more groceries than I got time. So I got to watch. Amen. I got to watch my time. Amen. Look at uh, uh, James 3 and 7. Amen. James 3, amen, and 7. That's 13, 17. At 13, 17, I need to go to 13, 18. Let's see what I got here. 13, 18. Oh, we have no. Oh, we four, four chapter. Amen. The seventh verse. Thank y'all. Amen. Let me change this to four. Amen. It could, you, can't, you, can't, you can't hide that from me, devil. You, you're too late. Amen. Uh, so we look at 13, 18. Amen. Uh, we had the right page number. Amen. We didn't have, we had the wrong number. And then so the fourth chapter, seven verse, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he shall what? Believe. Now, notice how the scripture put it. Some people quote the scripture and they just say resist the devil and they flee. Now, you can't do it, you can't do it that way. You have to read the whole verse and, and it'll work for you. So if I, if I submit myself to God, I didn't resist the devil because now I want to do right. See, the devil's trying to get me to do wrong. And instead of doing the wrong, I'm doing the right. Because God is right. He's righteous. So now, if I submit myself to God, that's why the devil took off. Because he couldn't get me to do the wrong. I did the right, which is of God. You can't see this thing, so you have to have knowledge of it. So I got knowledge now. Amen. Bless God. So if Adam and Eve, amen, would have submit themselves to what God said, then Satan would have took off. Did y'all get that? He couldn't tip them. How you gonna tip somebody that don't want to do, do the wrong? You only can tip folks that are doing, uh, the one that's living right to try to get them to do wrong. That's why temptation comes. And temptation comes so that you can do the wrong. But as long as you do the right, look at that verse again, submit yourself therefore to who? God. To God. So when you submit yourself to God under pressure, under your trials, under your tests, because see, it's God the one's gonna help you anyhow. So when you submit yourself to God, you submit yourself to the Spirit of God, and now the Spirit of God, amen, is going to help us, amen, and then the devil takes off because he can't, the Bible says he's going to take off, he's going to flee. Ain't that so? That's good news to know. When I do right, the wrong can't get in. Draw nigh to who? Eight verse. And he will draw nigh. Clean your hand, ye sinners. Purify your heart, ye double-minded. The Bible says double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Sometimes your mind gets double. Your mind, your mind want to do right and your mind want to do wrong. That's double-minded. Amen. So, Lord, have mercy. What you have to do is rebuke that other part of that mind that's trying to get you to do wrong. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. So your mind gets double. Amen. You want to do right, but your flesh. Amen. Trying to override God's spirit. You need to let the spirit of God override the flesh. When you let the spirit of God override the flesh, then the devil going to take off because he can't get you to do wrong. Can't get you to sin. Ain't that so? Where did that preacher come from? 
Plumhouse, Texas, 1375 East Lucas, zip 77703. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm asking God. Give the Lord another hand clap for years. God is somebody. I say, God is somebody. Amen. We get nine times. Amen. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy to heaven. Now, who he talking about? He talking about folks that are sin. He talking about folks that are doing right. They ain't got to weep and mourn and cry. They did nothing wrong. So when I do wrong, I got to cry out to the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Wash me, Lord. Wash me and clean me, Lord. I don't want to be like this, Lord. Lord, help me to stop sinning. What's wrong with that pride? My God. I'm getting a little high up here. Uh, look at temporary. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Why you have to humble yourself? Could it be something wrong? So you humble yourself, and ask God to forgive. That's a sign of humbleness. Amen. Brother Mike did that this evening. He had a sign of humbleness. Who who you think will lift him up? The Lord, the Lord will. I don't know how this thing works. The word said it. It'd be not know how it works. When he humbled himself, Amen. God receives that. God the one that's gonna lift him up. Man can't do it. Give the Lord another hand clap for you. Amen. God is somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, amen, I've got uh, uh, page 770. Isaiah 10, 27. Let's make sure that's the right page here. Amen. Isaiah, amen, the 10th chapter, amen, the 27th verse. Page 7. Oh, let's see here. Isaiah 10, the 27, that's page 770. Amen. I couldn't see my little numbers up here. Amen. Bless God. But thank God, amen. I'm going to correct that in zero. You show sure don't look right. Amen. It's Isaiah, amen, 10 and 27. Amen. Uh, make it better. Amen. I like better. Amen. So it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the what? Anointing. Who is the anointed one? Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one. So when Jesus, the anointed one, come on you, he'll destroy that yoke on you. I got something to back me up. I got some more scriptures to back me up on that yoke. Oh, yes, God. If you're looking for some rest, amen. He said, come to me. Amen. Let's go to uh, page 1050. Amen. Page 1050. Amen. Page 1050. Lord, have mercy, God. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap, amen, for the word. Thank God. I said thank God for the word. Now, he's giving me an invitation where to come. Amen. Look at, look at uh, uh, the 28th verse, the 11th chapter, the 28th verse. Come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you. Uh, Sometimes when I'm tired, I just say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm coming to you for, and then I'll be snoring. Don't be, don't be long here. I'm out of here. Oh, I'll be out of here then. Lord, have mercy, God. Oh, one, one night, the Lord just let me whip upon the devil while I was sleeping. I said, God, you also. I mean, you know, I went to sleep called on Jesus. I went to sleep, called on Jesus, you know, because I was tired, wasn't diving. I just kept calling on him until I went to sleep. You, you know how a baby, you give a baby a, 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 some milk, and then, and then if you warm it up, what, what happens to the baby? Go to sleep. You go to sleep quicker because the milk is warm, and it does something to that baby. Amen. So, I, uh, by, by God, I know how to go to sleep. I, I'm calling me some Jesus. Amen. Come and come to me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, I will, I will give you rest. Amen. Look at that 29th verse. Take my yoke. Now, we talked about the yoke, amen, in, 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 in the Old Testament. He said, well, take my yoke, amen, bless God, uh, upon you and learn of me. So once I learn of Jesus Christ, that he, he will not sin. I got him in my life. Now, I got some scriptures back there, too, that he'll take you out if you, if you don't bring forth fruit. You can be in Christ without fruits, and he'll pluck you out. I got a scripture to back me up. That's awesome. Man, you ain't looking at this on TV now. Uh, CNN, Fox, 6 and 12 and 4. You ain't find this on TV. You have to go get this out the word for yourself. Because sometimes, man, they, man, they gonna give you all this now. Amen. So you have to go get it for yourself. Amen. Take your yoke, amen, upon you. Amen. 
and lot of me, so after lot of Jesus cried that he would not sin, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest until you what? Soul. So he give you rest. When you come to him, you don't see him. So you have to do it by faith. I think you have to do this by faith. So faith walk. So you ask say, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I need some rest, Lord. Amen. I find this life burdensome. Man, life beat me up a little bit here, Lord. Life, life is throwing me all over the place. Uh, I need some rest from you. Lord, how about I say? Uh, look at that third verse. For my yoke is easy and my what? So uh, <laughs> that's why this is the, is the yoke that's strong to bring me over. Amen. The anointing is. So Jesus is that anointing. Holy Ghost is that anointing. The word of God is that anointing. Amen. The Father is that anointing. So when you got the anointing on your life, amen, the yoke is destroyed. Amen. You'll go free. They'll break it off of you. Stuff can't stay on you. Not in the presence of God. My God. He didn't say my yoke was easy. He said his is. So when I get my yoke to with Jesus, I have a peace. I have rest. Hey, your mother can't buy that from you. And the world can't give it to you. It don't come from the world. It only comes from Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Get a lot another here hand clap here. God. I said, God is somebody. Now he done told me. Hey, Amen. Oh, yeah, that was something else I wanted to back up. Amen. I want to back that up. Lord, what, what was that scripture? I know you gave it to me in my spirit. Amen. Now I lost it. Bring it back to me, Lord. Amen. Let, let's look at another one here. Amen. Let's look at another one. Let's go to uh we got we gotta cast our we gotta cast everything on God. Let's go to page 1324. The Lord may give it back to me. Because it, it gave it, then it took off somewhat. Amen. Bless God. Lord, bring it back. Amen. That's page 1324. Amen. Page 1324. Amen. Uh, uh, so I got I to gotta cast everything, cast my cast on God. Amen. Bless God. So we should see, amen, page 1324, uh, that's uh, 5 and 7. Amen. 5 and 7. Amen. Cast, how many cares? Oh. Why would my God want me to cast all my cares on? Because he cares. Because he cares for me. Amen. And he can handle them. See, sometimes you can't handle them cares. Them cares, them cares, they take you under. Lord, I mean, so you have to cast it on, on the Lord. Now, the devil going to bring the cast back. Play the game with him now, because I know I've I played this game before. Uh, he'll, bring this, he'll bring all the most stuff back to you. Then you got to give it back to God. And then he'll bring it back to you. And then you got to give it back to God. How you know when it's gone? It ain't bother you anymore. That's the way you know you won the game. That you're playing with that spirit out there, amen, that you can't see. My God. Y'all see why the devil don't like me? I don't like him either. Feeling his music. So he told me to cast all my cash. So when I, I get to carry everything, you know, for my family, a house, or whatever I got to deal with, it, amen, rent house or whatever, amen, cars, automobiles, fiction, Jesus, Bible, so center. You know I give that to? I give that to God. Go give me some rest. Sweet bread. Uh, so, so sweet, so sweet, <laughs> the sweet sleep. That's a Bible piece of that, too. Amen. Sweet red. Use it. Bible speaks of sweet sleep. Give you some sweet sleep. It'd be sweet when you give it to Him. Stop caring about it. Because you can't have it. Amen. So, boy, I tell them guys at the jail and they're worrying about their family. I say, How are you going to worry about your family? I said, The best thing you can do for your family is pray for them. Because you, you can't do nothing for them locked up. What you going to do for them? So the only thing you can do, amen, for that, I tell myself, the only thing you can do for your family is pray for them. Put them in prayer, because you don't know, you, you ain't, you know, you're not over there to help them. But God is, I say God is, prayer changes things. And it changes you. Amen. I, I tell them it change you, you're going to get right with God. Amen. Prayer changes things. I'm always praying. Amen. I don't pray no one time. I put Herman at the top, milk, and the bottom. That's me. Make sure he get in that prayer. He stay in the prayer line here. Lord, how about say, hey Amen. I'm always praying for him. And then I pray for others. See, if I can pray for Herman first, I'm trying to make this thing plain. You know, if people pray for other people first, don't do that. Pray for yourself first. 
See, because if you keep yourself under control, you can help others. Now, if they lose control and you lose control, who in control? Yeah. Ain't nobody but the devil in control. So somebody got to stay in control. So keep yourself first, second, and last so you can have others stay in control because you're in control. Lord, have mercy, God. Give the Lord another hand clap for you. God is somebody. I say God is somebody. God is an awesome God. Amen. Bless God. Thank God for the word. Amen. Bless God. So we see, amen, we see here, amen, that I got to cast my cow on him. Amen. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Let's go to page 1330. Amen. Page 1330. And then we're going to stop here. Amen. Because my time, I say my well, time is caught with me. Amen. Page 1330. Amen. We're going to stop here at Lord, have a, oh, yeah, okay, okay, Lord, let me go a little bit further than that. All right, uh, I'll do it, Lord, it, 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 amen, whatever you want. Amen, uh, let's go to page 13, 20, that's fourth chapter, the fourth verse. Amen, fourth chapter, the fourth verse. You have God, little children, and have overcome them, because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What, what the greater one live at? Yeah. In us. So you have to tell yourself that the greater one is in you. So when the enemy is trying to get you to do something wrong, tell him that the greater one lives in. So now you got backup now. you got some spiritual backup to help you because the greater one lives in you. Now you can tell yourself I can do. All things. How many things? All things. All things to Christ that what? Amen. Trick me. So you tell yourself that. Now you got the greater one. you got God in you. you got Jesus. You're bragging on the, the one that's on the inside of you now. You say, I, I can do all things through. when your old self can't do it all. Amen. You say, I can do all through Christ that shit me. Yes, I'm God. So it don't be you no more if he was in you. <coughs> Lord, amen. Get the Lord. I say, get the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Praise God is somebody. So the greater one lives in us. Amen. Look at this verse. That you of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. You of God, and he that knoweth God hear us. He that is not of God hear not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we did with error one time over here. Amen. Oh, bless God. We had a message on error. Amen. So if, if you do what is right, amen, you won't have to do the wrong and fall in error. And error won't have to be the one that's going to cause us, amen, to have to suffer, amen, for what we did wrong. Error yeah, can cause you. And so there's a spirit of truth and there's a spirit of what? Error. Who is the spirit of truth? God. And who is the spirit of error? The devil. The devil. And you don't see God and the devil, but if you have knowledge of the word, you ought to be able to see that in that scripture that is taught about God, because he's true. The devil ain't nothing but a liar. He ain't nothing but error. Look at that seven five. God, beloved, not, uh, let, not, uh, let, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So uh, I have to love my enemies. I have to love those that don't love me, because I'm under commandment. So when I can't love, I say, God, you got to let your love flow through me. Who love? And God love. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean, Brother Herb was talking about that God be love. You got to let his love flow through you. Yeah, if you let his love flow through you, you ain't going to have nothing in your heart against nobody. Against who? Yeah, y'all want to look over nobody at me? Nobody. Ninth verse. And this was manifest man the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that, he might, that we might live through who? Through him, through Christ. That's how we're supposed to be living. Amen. That's how we're supposed to be an overcomer. That's how we're supposed to be dealing with things in our life. Amen. To try to deal with us. We can't do it. Come on, y'all. Amen. You know you can't do it. You done failed too many times. So go get you some Jesus, some Holy Ghost, and some Word in you. Lord, get you some dutiful power. Amen. So you can stop sinning. Never heard. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelling in us, and, he, and, and his love is what? Perfected. So I have, to, I have to show some love, so love is kind, gentlemen. Lord, have mercy, God. Amen. When you go study 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, you find out about God's love. So you have to study that. Amen. Love is kind, gentlemen, meek. Amen. Lord, you'll find out love, amen, have nothing to do with sex. 
Now this kind of love, Amen. I'm trying to tell y'all something here. I know how, I know about your feelings. You fall in love because you have a little sex. Thank you, baby. This kind of love ain't got nothing to deal with. And this this love here ain't got nothing to deal with your feelings. Or your emotions. Beloved, uh, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If, if we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Look at that 13 verse. Hereby know we that we are, we dwell in him and he in us, because he had given us of his what? Spirit. Of his spirit. Uh, now, now, God made marriage honorable and the bad what? Undefiled. You can have as much sex you want when you're married, but don't go fool around with somebody else that ain't yours. Oh, you're going to get in trouble. Now, he didn't fix it for you to satisfy your flesh with his word, made undefiled in marriage. And who? Marriage. In marriage. I wonder why God fixed it like that. Uh, well, if y'all stop and think about it, if God didn't fix it for it to be married, you have a woman over here and one over there. Now you got three kids over here, two over there, 10 over there, 20 over here. You'd be like Solomon. Be like who? How, how Solomon lost out with God? Them wives. The wives had him to build them out of temples. And they turned his heart from God. That man had a thousand, come by and 500 wives. How many days you got in a year? <laughs> he had more women than he had. What are you going to do with all that? What's wrong with the man? Let me get back over here. That wasn't in the notes. Hey Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap. I said, give the Lord another hand clap for his God or somebody. Hey Amen. So I got to love. Hey Amen. God be God. That's spiritual. Hey Amen. Ain't nothing to do with your feelings and emotions. Hey Amen. Bless God. I said, spiritual. And so he made, he made it where you can have feelings and emotions for your wife. Hey Amen. That's where he, he, he ordained that. Hey Amen. That's why you have feelings and emotions. It's supposed to be for the one that God set forth for you as a marriage couple. Not shacking together now. Shacking up. Get papers for your dog, can't get nothing for your wife. Where we at? I got drunk up here. Which way we going to, brother? Going to 14. And he has seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. He came to save us from sin. Amen. Bless God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, the Son of God, dwelt in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Here is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is... So are we in this world. So since God is love, we love, who, who Vince are belong to? God. Hey, you don't belong to that? Nope. Lord, look here, I'm going to take care of that situation. <laughs> Step aside. Wrong man. Uh huh. What, what you think will happen? Oh, he chastised those that he loved. I'll catch a good whipping for that. Because you see, I'm telling God how to handle his business. Now, he said, Vince belong to him. He's going to repay. I'm so glad he fixed it that way because, you see, if vengeance belonged to me, every little stuff come my way, I want to take vengeance on you. But God, he's long-suffering. <coughs> he put up with you longer than I can. <laughs> I said, God can. I thank God they don't belong to me. I leave that alone. And if, it, if the devil come to me and try to make me think I can do that, then he's going to get himself a good whip. I said, the devil will. Because I'm going to put some Jesus on him. I put some blood on them. I put the Holy Ghost on them. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Lord, have mercy, God. Amen. God is somebody. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, Lord. Amen. Here's our love made perfect that we have. Boldness in the day of 17 verse, going to 18 verse. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, why would perfect love cast out fear? Because if I have a love for you, I'm not trying to hurt you. So I don't fear you. I don't have no fear of you because I ain't did you nothing wrong. Now, I know when I was out there in that world and I popped you side of the head, I looked behind my back, make sure you don't come pop me side of my head. I had a fear. I didn't show you no love. So there was no fear, no perfect love, cast out fear. I mean, because if fear had torment, he that feared is not made perfect in love. Uh, we love him. What, what kind of fear we should have? Fear of God. The fear of God. See, if I got a fear of God, then I'm going to love you. Because I know the consequences that I don't love you. So I, I fear God. That's why I got to love. I ain't got no choice. I, I thank God for love. We love him because, amen, he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he's a what? Liar. You can't love God and hate your brother. Because the Lord, the word call you a what? Liar. A liar. Lord, have mercy, God. Help me, Lord. Help me to love. I can't love, Lord. And it did something to me. I can't. I can't love, Lord. You want me to love, but I can't do it. So I need you. Ain't that good? You can ask God to help you. Because that's that divine nature that will come in you and help you to love when you can't do it. He that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? Now you see your brother every day. He said, now how you going to love God and you see your brother every day and you talk about you hate him? Y'all say, uh-uh, uh-uh, you ain't got no love. You ain't got, you ain't got my love flowing through you. Put him on the right. And this commandment have we, fi- we, we, we from him that he who loved God love his what? Brother. So you don't love your brother under, uh, because of the condition. You love him regardless. Unconditional. Lord have mercy. No matter what the way down, you still got to love him. I tell Herman, I say, love your wife as Christ loved the church. No, Herman say, oh, I don't feel like loving her. I say, you don't love her. You ain't getting me in trouble. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, y'all want me to say it again? I tell Herman, you ain't getting me in trouble with your little feelings and emotions. Uh, I quote that scripture to him often. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for uh, Tell that to her. So if he try to get out of order, because they ain't no work out for him the way he wanted, can't have his way. What happened to a child when they can't have their way? Temper time. Yeah, when they temper time. Mm-hmm. They get mad, fussed, and then you pop them a couple of times, then they say, oh, that don't feel good. <laughs> then they want to straighten up a little bit. That's what the Lord has to do with us. When, he have, when we have our little temper time, he have to pop us a couple of times. Get back over here. Ooh, Lord, hey, can I get that in the end, Lord? Uh, let's see where we're at here. Uh, that, that, that was one other. Oh, yeah, I know where it's at now, Lord. Hey, Amen. Yeah, I don't even see it written on here, but thank you for that. I know you want me to put that in there. Come with me now. Hey, Amen. Come with me to uh, Second Chronicles 21. Is he the first Chronicles? I think it's the first Chronicles. Yeah, it's the first Chronicles. First Chronicles in 21 chapter. Let's go to first Chronicles. Let's see if you're in that. Hey man, can I show do I have it here? I thought I wrote it down. That's what the Lord wants me to bring out. I gotta bring this out. Yeah, ain't worried about no time now. Uh-uh, not me. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Lord. Hey man, that's page 507. Hey man, page 507. And then we're gonna see, hey man, that 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 uh Lord, how about it? Uh God is no respect of person. God is no respect of person when it comes to sin. And we, we want to see that in the 21 chapter. My God is no respect of person. Amen. Bless God when it comes. Amen. Somebody, somebody doing that's wrong. Amen. God is no respect of person. So second, second Chronicles. Amen. Bless God. Uh, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Who did it? Satan. Satan. Satan used David, the king. Now the king knew that he wasn't supposed to number Israel because you, you weren't supposed to put your trust 
amen, in man. The Bible says, cursed is he that trusts in man. So you weren't supposed to put your trust in a man. So uh, what David did, you see, God the one that helped him win the battle. Who helped him win the battle? God, God did, not the men. He, God helped the men win the battle. So David, he going to go count his men, and he wasn't supposed to do that. So Satan came in him and drove him to go against God. What do you think happened to David? Oh, he got in a good way. Yeah, we'll see that in the Word, how God whipped him. So God is no respecter person. Preacher, I don't care who you are. Bishop, so and so, doctor, pastor, Baptist, teacher, pastor, prophet. You go against God, He will take care of you. He ain't no respecter person. Yeah, just because you feel anointed every now and then, that's good. But He'll whip you with that anointing on your life. If you go do, a, if you do something against Him, don't be deceived. Amen. Second verse. Amen. 21 and 2. And David said to Job, amen, to, to, to Joab, amen, to the rulers of the people, go to number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to, to me that I may know it. Third verse. And Joab answered, the Lord making his people a hundred times so many more as there be. But my Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why didn't do that? my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a call to what? Trespass. Trespass against Israel. They were, he, he was going to. See, Joab knew, amen, the word. So Joab was trying to tell the king, no, king, don't do that. You're going against what God tell you not to do. Now, he, he, he wants you to trust in him, not in your men. Your men didn't help you win nothing. It's God did it. My God, my God, my God. Now put your trust in people. They might, they might with you with you today, and today they might not be with you. And even when the sun go down, oh, they might not even wait that long. Let me get back over here. Amen. Put your trust in who? Put your trust in God, not in people now. Because people can change on you. Amen. So here, here we see Satan, amen, coming into David, and David should have what? What David should have did was once he recognized. You see, you can recognize the spirit. How can you recognize the spirit? The spirit. Huh? He's going to have to go against God's order. Yeah, everybody, John, that's it. You can't make no plan in that. When they try to get you to go against God's word, you can tell where that spirit comes from. See, God ain't going to go against his word. But Satan will. And they have you do it. You got to use the vessel. So he used David. David should have rebuked that spirit. Now David's the apple of God's eye. But whoa, 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 look what happened here. Amen. And nevertheless, the king word prevailed against Joab. Amen. Wherefore, Joab departed and went through all Israel and came to Jerusalem. So, uh, Lord, have mercy. His word was stronger than Joab because he's the king. See, he had authority. So he let his authority override God's word. I don't care who you are. The president. Don't make no difference. God is no respect of you know, they even say in the White House. They even they say that all over the White House. You're not above the law. I wonder why they say that. Because the person that's in control of the uh, of the situation, the law tells them to do a certain thing, and they can't go above the law because they go above the law. They didn't broke the law. So then, if they didn't broke the law, they got to be convicted. Because the law said you can't go against me. That's in the natural. God. Ain't going nowhere. Eight verse. Look at it, eight verse. Amen. And David, and David said unto God, and that's what we're going to start at, at eight verse, amen, because our time running short. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done all, all these things, but now beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. See, David was a man that would repent right then. I want to be the place where I don't have to repent. If you do right, do you have to repent? No, no you ain't did that wrong. Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous to repent. I come to call sinners. I want to get a place where I can stop sinning, Lord. Help me. David repented. 
pinned here. And, and, and the Lord spoke to uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Now, said, uh, uh, thus said the Lord, Offer thee three things, choose thee on one of them that I may do it unto thee. Now, uh, God didn't take him out. He didn't kill him. Because the wage of sin is what? Yeah. Death. Because he repented, asked the Lord to forgive him, not God for the whip him. God chastised those he what? Oh, no. Any in here, any, 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 any y'all like whippings? Uh -huh. So I had said, Lord, uh, help me to do right, because I was cutting so many whippings from God. I said, Lord, help me to do right. So I didn't stop catching all these whippings. Lord, of mercy. Lord, of mercy. And so, uh, and Gabe uh, came to David and said unto him, Thus said the Lord God thee, either three years famine, Three months to be destroyed before thy foes, or while uh, that the sword of thy enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence of the land, and the angel of the Lord destroyed throughout out all the coast of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself, what word shall I bring again to them that sent me? So he said, David, this, these are the three you got now. Which one do you want? All of them. Now, David said, not, not man, Lord, because you, you catch me, he ain't going to show me no mercy. So he chose for God to whip him, not man to come against him. And David said it again, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of who? He didn't want me to fall in the hand of a, of a man. For, for, very, for very great are, the, are his mercy. But let me not fall in the hand of what? He said, oh, let me fall in the hand of a man, because when he catches me, he ain't going to show me no mercy. He said, Lord, I'm ready for you to deal with me, because I know you're merciful. But he got him a good whipping. Uh-oh, we're not out of... We not out of, out of time. We're out of word again. Brother John, you want to take care of that? Hey, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get a Lord a hand clap for the word. Amen. Hey, Bless y'all. Hey, Amen. We're going to draw straight this out. Lord, Lord, your word said, what, two or three? That's the